Over these past weeks in Easter, we have heard Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. Last week, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And today, the reading is a continuation of last week's reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in the Father's love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear good fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. The background for these words are quite challenging. Jesus speaks these words just one day before he is betrayed and he goes to the cross. The coming days would be an unspeakable ordeal for Jesus and his disciples, his followers. And therefore, in order to comfort and to encourage and strengthen his, his followers, his friends, and you and me, Jesus speaks these words, Abide in my love. It is a love that is already present to us, and we are already being held by Jesus. Even before we respond, Jesus has already gotten a hold of us. So last Sunday at the hog roast, which was a great, enjoyable event. One of our youngsters was just exhausted. I think she was worn out and she was draped over her mother being held. I couldn't tell if she was sleeping or not, but, but she was just exhausted and she was resting secure in the arms of her mother. And that's a perfect image of what it means to abide in the love of Jesus, to be cared for by your Lord and God. And so today again, Jesus says to us, I call you my friends. You are my friends. You did not choose me, but rather I chose you. And hopefully all of us know what it feels like to be chosen every once in a while. Maybe chosen to be on a particular team. You're chosen to be in the school play or the choir. You're chosen to represent others at some particular event. It feels good to be chosen. And thankfully, the Lord God has chosen you not because of your resume or your qualifications. The Lord God chooses you not because of the trophies that you might have or the ribbons or the shingles hanging on your wall, but rather the Lord God has chosen you simply because 
You belong to the Lord. You are a child of God. God created you. And God calls you. Friends, chosen, beloved. So we abide in Christ. Jesus the vine. It is from Jesus the vine that we draw our strength, our life. From the vine, Jesus, we draw our faith. We draw courage to live into each new day. As we make our home then in Christ, as we dwell in Jesus, Jesus gives us this promise. He has promised to dwell or live among us. He says, I will remain with you. I will not abandon you. Well, it is from this congregational home then that we draw our strength. We go from this faith community out to bear good fruit, as Jesus calls us. One particular author says that as church together, we can think of ourselves as a base camp. Now, if you've been a hiker or if you happen to see stories about mountain climbers, you know that climbers have a base camp. And the base camp provides resources, provision, and equipment so that the climbers can proceed up the mountain. It is from the base camp that they keep in communication, usually electronically. And if they're headed up and the word is given that bad weather is ahead, then the climbers will return to the base camp to weather out the storm. And then they head back out and continue their ascent up the mountain. So as Gloria Day together, we are a base camp. Here at base camp, we encourage and support one another. Here we can be trained and equipped. Here we pray for one another. And it is from this base camp that we venture out in faith in order to, well, bear good fruit, as Jesus calls it. So base camp anchors all of us into Jesus the vine. We are anchored together to one another as a team. Now, when I think about anchors, I recall a time that I was with one of my granddaughters, and we were, it was just a couple years ago, and we were on a small lake in Michigan. We were in a fishing boat, and we had oared out to a particular place that I hoped the fish might be biting a little. And then I turned back to my granddaughter in the back of the boat, and I said, okay, now let down the anchor. And she looked at me kind of funny, and she hesitated, and then impatiently I said, just, just let the anchor down, just drop it in the water. And so she did. And in just a few moments, we realized that the rope that was tied to the anchor was not tied to the boat. <laughs> so we lost the rope, we lost the anchor, and we began to drift out into the lake. And my granddaughter, Jake, gave me one of those looks like, really, Grandpa? <laughs> well, we know that drifting can be a problem. In our relationships, at times, we may drift apart. Sometimes people say that. Well, we just, we lost connection. We, we drifted away. And we know in our busy and hectic lives, we can, well, drift away from the principles the guiding principles that govern our lives that keep us anchored. And sadly, I suppose, too, we can drift away from the people and the places that keep us anchored in our relationship to our Lord Jesus, who is the life-giving vine. Without an anchor, boats drift. If climbers or hikers lose communication with the base camp, they often end up in trouble. And branches that become distant or disconnected to the vine, well, they lose their strength to bear good fruit. So Jesus calls you and me, abide in me, stay connected. Stay connected to me, the life-giving vine. Locate your love, your strength, your courage in me the vine that gives life. 
And then you can go out and bear some good fruit. Abide in me and you can ascend up the mountain. Abide in me and your boat will not drift, but will be anchored securely. And then you will rest easy sitting there on the water. So Jesus about to face the cross, about to leave his disciples, intends to encourage his followers, his friends, you and me. Jesus says this promise, I will abide with you. I will remain with you through thick and thin. I will not desert you. Abide in me and then love one another. Now that word love can be kind of lofty and ethereal. Sometimes uh, our eyes might glaze over when we hear that word love. So how do we put wheels on this word love? Well, I think it really boils down to this. Love means to take good care of one another. So we have a few examples of taking good care of one another up here. As we look at the social ministry displays out in the narthex, concrete ways that we put wheels on love, how we take care of others. And that's really what bearing good fruit is all about, taking good care. If you think about John's gospel and taking care, we can go clear back to chapter 2, and we see Jesus taking good care of people, bearing fruit. So you remember when Jesus attended that wedding in chapter 2 and they ran out of wine, what did Jesus do? He told them to fill these big jugs full of water and he gave them new wine, the best wine of all. Jesus wants you to have joy in your life. In chapter 4, we have a woman who was excluded, left out, scorned by her community. She had to come to the well by herself. And what did Jesus do? He gave her her life back. They brought people who were sick, paralyzed, crippled to Jesus. He brought healing to them. That's bearing good fruit. He was taking good care. Remember that woman who was caught in adultery. And they had gathered around now to stone her according to the law. And Jesus said, Let that one who has not sinned cast the first stone. And then Jesus forgave that woman. There was a blind man who wandered about, floundering in his life, and Jesus gave him his sight back. The people were hungry, and Jesus fed them. That's taking good care. It's bearing good fruit. There was a good friend of Jesus. You remember Lazarus. Died, dead as a stone, buried in the tomb. And Jesus raised his friend back to life. It's taking good care. It's bearing good fruit. And so Jesus thankfully takes good care of us and then he entrusts each other, us to one another, to care for one another. As Robert Fulgham wrote some 30 years ago in a popular little book, I think he summarizes love in this very concrete way. Watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. Watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. Friends, you have been chosen by God. Rather than drift, you abide securely in Jesus your Lord. And you love and take good care of one another. We take good care of the stranger. And all together we take good care of this earth that we receive as a gift from God as our home. The peace of God which surpasses our human understanding, keep our hearts and mind in Jesus the vine.